It's time to learn about cost, revenue, and profit, profit, profit. So we've got a handy dandy little picture here that means absolutely nothing. But look, it's profit. Isn't that cool? I think so. So I'm going to tell you a little story about profit. And really, this is the American dream that I'm about to unfold before you. What happens when you take a young entrepreneur whose eyes are full of promise and whose life is full of meaning? Well, he grows up and he makes and sells sharks. At any rate, that's what I did. And it's worked out for dad. It's worked out for America. And so I think we're doing pretty well so far. So here's me raking in a handful of cash while uh, my <clears throat> patron of the store gets mauled by a shark. And I think that's pretty straightforward, but here is the exact mathematical problem that I have to face today. There are costs involved in making these sharks. This doesn't happen for free people. Sharks don't grow on trees. And so it turns out that it costs me $200 just to set up the shark manufacturing equipment. And then on top of that, Every time I want to make a new shark, I have to pay $6 for the materials per shark. And so the question I want to pose to you fine people is this. What is my total cost as a function of sharks? Now, if I'm going to answer this, then I want uh, cost to be the Y value, and that's going to be in dollars. And then my X value is going to be in terms of number of sharks. Now the two numbers we're going to use to make this function are going to be the fact that it's $200 just to set up the equipment and then $6 per shark for every shark. And so if this sounds familiar, it's because we're going to be building the equation of a line and the $200 is going to be the fixed amount and it's going to end up being our y-intercept. I'm going to write that down, y-intercept. And the $6 is going to end up being our variable cost and our variable cost is going to end up being slope. So I'm going to write this down on the side because this is an important thing that you should remember. When it comes to cost, the fixed cost is the y-intercept and the variable cost is the slope. Now, by the way, guys, variable cost is what it's called sometimes, but you'll also be seeing it called marginal cost. So as far as section 1.4 goes, variable cost and marginal cost means the same thing. It just means the slope of the line. And so we go back over here. We take a look at the numbers we have. The variable cost is $6 because it's $6 per shark. The fixed cost is $200 because that's the cost we have to pay even if we don't make any sharks at all. And so the line that we get looks like this. C of X is equal to our fixed cost, a flat $200, plus $6 per shark, so 6X. And that is the final equation for our cost. That's cost as a function of sharks, people. And you're never going to see anything like it again, except for all those homework problems you're going to do where you're going to see a lot of stuff just like it. All right, that's cool. That's cost. Let's draw a little squiggly line and move on. Next topic, revenue. So the basic formula for revenue that you guys need to know is that revenue equals price times quantity. And now we have this little thing that says, I charge $16 per shark, find my revenue as a function of shark sold. Well, just like before, we're going to have X equals number of sharks and Y equals dollars, 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 dollars. So my revenue as a function of X is going to be price times quantity. And so what's the price? It's $16 per shark, so it's just 16. I'm going to multiply that by my quantity. And my quantity is just the variable x. The quantity in general is going to refer to the number of whatever you sell. And check it out. The number of things I sell is exactly what, my, what I mean by x. So in this case, when we have price times quantity, it's just price times the variable x. And dudes, in fact, when you're doing revenue equations, this will basically always happen. If you're setting up the formula for revenue, then your formula for revenue will always look like revenue equals some number times quantity. You'll be able to plug in a number for price, but the quantity will stay a variable. Or you'll be able to plug in some number for quantity, but the price will stay a variable. 
So you're going to plug in a number for one but not the other, and which one it is just depends on the situation. In this particular problem, we know that we're plugging in a number for price because we're given a price number. And so that's why quantity just stays x. It'll be the same thing the other way. If you're given a number for quantity and you're supposed to leave price the same, you should be able to tell because it'll say something like, I purchased 10 sharks. All right, so r of x equals 16 times x. That just comes straight out of the fact that revenue equals price times quantity. 16 was our price, x was our quantity, so we got a nice handy dandy function, and that's the answer for this question. So that's revenue. And now let's talk about where the money is, people. Show me the money. And the money is in profit. The simple formula for profit is that profit equals revenue minus cost. So if you see this function, uh, if you see this question that says, what is my profit? Then you're just going to write profit equals, and you got to scroll up and figure out your revenue function, 16x minus, you got to scroll up a little bit further and remember what your cost function was. And so what we're subtracting, we are subtracting 200 plus 6x. When you do that, you got to make sure to put those puppies inside parentheses. We're subtracting all of 200 plus 6x. We're subtracting that all at once. And so if we're going to simplify that, that's going to be 16x. The minus sign distributes, so that's minus 200 minus 6x. And now the last thing we do is we combine 16x minus 6x. 16 minus 6 is 10. So we get 10x, and we still have minus 200. Ah, no, 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 no. Okay, Whew. close one. All right, dudes, so here's the thing. Uh, 10x minus 200 ends up being our final answer for profit, and the only, way, the only thing we had to do to get that was to take the revenue function minus the cost function and simplify. That's all it is. Now we're looking at this little thing called the break-even point. So I'm this entrepreneurial shark farmer, and I put in a lot of my own hard-earned money just to set up this shark manufacturing equipment. But the thing is, I put in a lot of my own money. And so it takes me a while of selling sharks and having my sharks eat the limbs off of customers. It takes me a while of doing this before I can earn my money back. So what my question is, is how long do I have to go about selling these sharks? How many sharks do I have to sell before I've even made back all the money I've invested, let alone making a profit on top of that? So the question is, what's my break-even point? And the break-even point is when profit equals zero. Alternatively, and sometimes this is a better way of thinking about it, break-even is also when revenue is equal to cost. So when revenue equals cost, the profit is zero, because remember, profit is revenue minus cost. So if these two guys are equal, you subtract them to find the profit, and you'll get zero. Sometimes you want to think about the break-even point being where the profit equals zero, maybe if you already have the profit function. Other times you might want to think about the break-even point as being where revenue equals cost, and we'll do an example of that in a second. Now first, we're going to finish answering this sucker. How many sharks do I have to sell in order to break even? All I have to do to answer that is set my profit function to be zero, and then solve. So I'm just going to take my profit function, 10x minus 200. I'm going to set it equal to zero, and I'm going to solve. And so just by virtue of solving that puppy, I find out that I need to sell 20 sharks, 20 huge stomp and man-eating sharks, just in order to break even. Every shark I sell after 20 is just going to be icing on the cake and money in my pocket. You know what I'm saying? Of course you do. All right, dudes. So we just finished talking about break-even points. And we're going to go on from there to a couple of fancy terms that you're going to see recur throughout 1.4. And these terms will even come back in later chapters. And most of these terms have the word marginal in front of them. So here's what we're looking at. Marginal profit, marginal revenue, marginal cost, and fixed cost. Now, some of these we talked about already. Fixed cost just means how much money you have to pay to get started before you can even start making and selling sharks. So if we scroll all the way back up here, let's see what we were doing with the cost. It cost me $200 just to set up the shark manufacturing equipment. So it's $200 out of my pocket before I can even start making sharks. And so 200 is going to be the fixed cost. Fixed cost is how much money you have to pay before you even start making stuff. Fixed cost is 200. Same deal with per unit cost, except it's the other thing. It costs me $6 per shark that I make. 
And so because it's $6 per shark, that qualifies as per unit. And another fancy name for that is marginal. So I'm gonna put a little $6 right there. And in general, guys, for everything that you do in 1.4, when you see the word marginal, marginal just means the slope. Intuitively, marginal means how much money uh, do you get if you do one more. So you can think about marginal cost as how much more does it cost me if I make a single additional shark. That way of looking at it is going to be important when we get to further chapters, but for 1.4, marginal just means slope. So when we get to marginal profit, let's go back up to this puppy, we can answer that just by going up to the profit function and finding the slope. Profit, 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 profit. Hey, here we go. Profit function is 16x. The slope for that puppy is 16, and that means the marginal profit is also just $16. If I sell one additional shark, I make $16 more profit. Uh, oops, I scrolled up to revenue, didn't I? Sorry, I'm dumb. I'm gonna put that $16 here. All right, if I sell one additional shark, I make $16 more revenue. So just to be clear, I got that 16, not from the profit function, but from the revenue function. So that's why it goes under marginal revenue. All right, and last but not least, we're looking at marginal profit. So we scroll up to the profit function. Profit function is here, 10x minus 200. And marginal just means slope. So the marginal profit is going to be $10. And something you can see right away is that marginal profit equals marginal revenue minus marginal cost. Marginal profit equals marginal revenue minus marginal cost. That will always be true. Always, always, always. All right, dudes, that's it for today, and I'll talk to you later.